day two on the push box. Um, as you guys can see, I pulled the tractor out. My buddy uh, Matt stopped by, gave me a hand. Um, we're gonna work on finishing up the skid steer mount today. You guys see me weld this up yesterday. Um, so now I'm gonna get the sides welded on and the bottom. I'm probably gonna weld the bottom of the skid steer coupler on first, and then that way I know what my length needs to be for the sides. Um, I'll probably cut like a 45 degree angle on the top of the side piece here, kind of like I did the, with the other coupler I made. That way it can fit underneath here and support this. Um, so this will be all boxed out. And then uh, once we get done with that, we'll uh, we'll see if we can get some other braces on. Um, so maybe we can work on that next and go from there. Okay, so I got another piece of two inch flat stock here. I'm gonna cut it at 45 inches. 45. going to be on the bottom and that's going to be the bottom where the pins go through on the skidster coupler. Okay so here's the piece for the bottom of the skidster coupler. I marked out each side for the pin holes so this is where I'll be cutting them out and notching it. So I'm just going to draw a few lines here and cut them out with the plasma cutter. Okay, so we got both sides notched out for the pins. I'm gonna get it tacked into place and then we can work on the sides. Okay, so now it's tacked into place. I'm gonna get a couple more tack walls on this uh, just to hold it. And then we're gonna flip it down, get the tractor in here and make sure we got the right angle with this bottom plate here. And we'll go from there. how this fits. Okay, so we got the top and bottom of the skister coupler all set. So now that I know we got these at the correct angle, I know that my slots are good for my pins. Um, now we're gonna get our sides built. So I'm gonna lay a piece of flat stock on there. I'll make some marks. I'll cut them with a the plasma cutter. We'll lay them in there, get them welded up. And then uh, the skid steer plate should be fully complete and you guys will be able to see this thing actually on the tractor and up in the air. Okay guys, now we can actually pick this thing up with the tractor and see how it's actually going to look.
All right, so the other day you guys seen me weld on the rest of this skid steer coupler. So as you can see, it's all boxed in now. So I got all that done. So now I can pick it up and move it around with the tractor with no issues. Um, don't have to worry about it falling apart on me. It's tacked together pretty good. So now what I wanna work on today is fully welding everything that's already here um, before I start to go any further. Um, I did go and pick up some more steel. I got a 10 footer here of one by two and that is gonna be getting cut in half. And I'm gonna be putting one piece up here to brace this top 45 degree angle. And then I'm gonna be putting another piece on the bottom edge here. It's gonna come across to brace this bottom 45. Um, that way them got some bracing and if they get hit by something, it's not just gonna to wanna to bend or break. Um, and then you guys seen the one by one that I have here and that's gonna be going on the sides um, from the side to the back panel here. And that's gonna help to brace the sides in case I have like a side impact. The only thing I got done is my weight bracket cart. I finally got the roller casters uh, mounted to it. So them are all on there now. I will be making a video coming up shortly of me actually testing this thing out and showing you guys how it works. So that's gonna be cool. I'm glad that that's finally done. At least I got something done for you guys. First thing I gotta do is get everything fully welded. So I'm gonna set you guys up and we can get this welded. got the back side of it fully welded really happy about that on the skid steer coupler here i stitch weld the inside stitch welded it here as well uh stitch welded the bottom side here and pretty much everything else i fully welded i fully welded the top of the skid steer coupler which this is going to be taking the most load so i want to make sure i fully welded that i fully welded this seam here where i had this 45 coming off there and all the way through this side panel here same with the other side. Coming down to the back side, I did the same thing with this 45. Fully welded uh, the corners on the sides there. All right, so now I got you guys looking at the bottom of the push box. I got it stood up um, on its top there. Now the only thing left to weld um, as of right now is the inside of each side here. And that is it. Um, so what I'm gonna work on now is starting on the skids. I have to cut all four corners here at an angle. I think that'll look nice because right now it just looks like a big box. Um, plus I have to have these angled um, in order to give the skids some curvature. So for the skids to not dig in and be straight cut, I gotta give this some angle because um, when the skids are all the way down, it's gonna need some room for the toe and the heel to kind of curl up. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I have three inch wide, quarter inch uh, flat stock here. This is gonna be for the mounts of the skids. So these are gonna be put sideways alongside here and I'm gonna end up drilling and slotting them probably in three places so they'll actually lay on their flat like this 
and uh, it'll be able to move up and down and the skid will sit on top of that or below that I should say and then that'll move the skid up and down. I'm going to cut these first and then once I get these cut I can figure out at exactly what length I want my skid mounts to be cut at and then once these are cut I can get going on making the skids so let's get to it. I'm going to use this piece of one by 2 um, as like a template on the other side because that's what I'm going to be using to brace the back side of this. Um, so if I cut too much off of the side panel here, I won't have enough to overlap to tie this all together. So holding that there will tell me exactly how much I can take off of this corner piece here. So I got all the corners cut and uh, I pulled the tractor in, picked up on it, and now I got it up in the air so I can work on it a little bit easier. And I'm sorry if you guys are seeing a glare right about here in the camera, uh, that's because my lens is cracked. Um, it's super screwed up right now from all the welding and fabrication I've been doing. Pretty much the entire lens is covered with metal. So I'm surprised it even looks this good. I will be getting a new lens very shortly. So hopefully you guys won't have to put up with that for too long. So right now I got it up in the air. What I'm gonna do is measure the sides. I'm gonna figure out exactly what length I want my skids to be. So we got a total here of about 23 and a half inches. So that's what I'm gonna make the mount to. And then what I'm gonna do is cut the mount at 45 degree angles on either side. And then the actual skid that's gonna lay underneath it, kind of like my tape measure is here, um, that's gonna be getting bent at a 45 degree angle on the toe and the heel. So that's the plan. I have this piece here. This is inch and three quarter, uh, hardened quarter inch flat stock. So that's what I'm gonna be using for it. I wish I had something thicker. I wanted to use 3 8 um, They didn't have that. And I tried to get 5 16 They didn't have that either. So I had to end up with this piece here, which is quarter. It's fine. I could always change it down the road. It's easy enough just to change the skids out, um, rebuild new ones. I could always cut it off and put a new skid on the skid mount because this is just going to be stitch welded anyway. So it'd be nothing to cut the stitch welds off and put a new skid on. So not too concerned about it. Let me get the piece of flat stock for the mount ready and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so there's our skid mount. See how that lines up here. This is gonna sit roughly like this here. I'm gonna cut a 45 on this here and a 45 on the back side. And then our skid's just gonna lay on the bottom. I'll probably tack it all the way out to the end here. And then once I get to the end of the toe and the heel, I will uh, finish tacking it towards the end here and then I'll beat it over with a hammer. And once that's all in place, I'll stitch weld it and we can put it on. As far as the adjustability goes, I'm gonna drill a hole in the top and the bottom of where I want my holes to be or my slots. Um, and then I can take the plasma cutter and cut out the center and that'll give me a nice open slot so that I have adjustability with this. And this is a three inch piece of flat stock. So I should have roughly, you know, two inches of adjustability, which is more than enough, I think, um, for what I'm gonna need. So it should work out pretty good.
All right, well, there's our pieces. I ground them down, cleaned them up, made sure they're exactly the same, one for each side. So what I'm gonna do is drill my holes in this first and get it slotted, and then that way I could figure out when I lay it up against the side panel of the push box, I could figure out exactly where I want the holes on the sides of the push box. So now what I gotta do is bring these down, gotta find my center, and then what I'm gonna do is go up maybe an inch each way, and I'm gonna make my holes. So I'll have a hole here and a hole here, and then I'm basically just gonna connect the dots with the plasma cutter and cut it out so that I got a nice slot. I'm gonna line up my white dot. So there we go, got all our half inch holes. Now I just gotta connect the dots with the plasma cutter and we should be all set with this skid mount. Okay guys, so I got my skid mounts all made up, got them all slotted. Um, now I'm working with this hardened piece of flat stock. This is gonna be going something like this on the very edge here, and I'm gonna be welding that on there. I'm gonna be stitch welding it. So um, I'm gonna need about 25 inches to cover this entire piece here, all the way up to 45 degree angles on either side for the heel and the toe of the skid. Um, so I got that marked out. So I'm gonna cut this one, and then I'll mark out another one, and cut another one. I'm gonna have just enough metal here and uh, that'll be for the skids. All right, and there's my skids. So this skid mount, is gonna be going on the skid, just like this. I made some marks with the Sharpie where I'm gonna be stitch welding it. I got four big marks there. So then we're gonna be four long stitch welds to hold this here in place. I'm gonna slightly overhang the skid mount on the skid shoe. That way when I weld this, the weld is not sticking out any further than the skid mount, because if that happens, it's not gonna lay flush.
Okay, well that skid's done. That's both of them fully welded. And now all I have to do is heat up this end right here and bend over the toe and the heel of the skid and uh, we can get them mounted up. I did get these bent and tacked into place. I got them tacked in three different places. Um, so I basically just heated it up right here and I peened it over with a hammer. And once I had it flush, I held it down with a pair of ice grips and tack welded it here. And then I tack welded it two more spots. So those are all set now. Now I just gotta finish welding these through and I'm gonna grind them flush like I did with these welds here on the back side so that it doesn't interfere with the uh, side panel of the push box. And once that's done, we'll get them mounted up and see what they look like. Okay, so now the skids are done, I'm gonna put them on. Um, I don't have enough half inch bolts with me right now, so I'm just gonna put on probably the two centers here. That way I can keep two bolts for the other side and at least get them mounted for right now. Um, then I gotta go to the hardware store and get some probably inch, inch and a quarter, grade eight half inch bolts um, to get them on there fully the way I want them. That way I can put this push box on the ground and get the tractor out of my way so I have some more space in here um, so that I can finish up the rest of this push box. When I do get new bolts, I'm gonna get some large washers for it as well. But for now, I'm just gonna throw some nuts on here. 
just so you guys can kind of get the picture of what it's going to look like. So it's going to look something like that. Only these bolts aren't going to be so long. So let me get the other side on and then I'm going to get this push box put on the ground and the tractor pulled out of here and I can show you guys what it looks like. All right guys, so it's now the following morning. As you can see, I got my skids mounted up last night. So them turned out really nice. Really happy with the way the skids turned out. I'll show you the other side here. Turned out really nice. So I'm not going to fully bolt them on right now because they got to come back off anyway when I go to paint this. I'm um, thinking about painting the uh, push box probably orange and then I'll probably do the skids Kubota gray. So Kubota gray for the entire push box and then Kubota orange for the skids. And then eventually when I get the rubber cutting edge, that'll be black. Um, but uh, I'm probably not gonna get the rubber cutting edge right away, just so you guys know, because I have a gravel driveway and I really don't need a rubber cutting edge. I don't need any cutting edge really on this um, because the cutting edge is gonna sit about an eighth inch, maybe a little bit more above the driveway anyway, so I'm not sucking up the stones. Um, so really, the cutting edge isn't even gonna be touching the ground. So for right now, I'm probably just gonna leave it the way it is. Hopefully before the end of the season here, I will buy the rubber cutting edge and put it on there just so you guys can see it. And then that way, if I ever do have to plow, you know, like a pavement driveway or somewhere where I'd want the cutting edge directly on the ground, at least then it'd be set up for it. So all I would have to do is adjust the skids down lower so that the cutting edge makes contact with the ground. Um, another thing I did last night, which I must've been getting pretty tired because I thought I was recording all of this and I did not have the camera on. Um, I did finally start on the back braces. I used that 10 footer of one by two that I had. I cut it in half and then I had to notch the ends here. You can see a little notch there. And I did that because I already had this welded. So I notched it so that it wasn't interfering with the welds. So I got them notched on either side and I got the top support on. So now I got it flipped up over on its front side. Yeah, you guys can see the skids a little bit better this way. The skids turned out really nice. I'm really happy with the way the angle came out. It's like a perfect 45. It matches really nicely with the front angle. And as you can see on the back side here, you can see the skid goes perfectly with the way I had cut that side panel. Um, but here is the bottom brace I was telling you guys about. So this is the other one by two that I used. And this is on the bottom of the cutting edge. So this is gonna help to support and stiffen the bottom ridge here. So if something were to hit it, it's not just gonna fold or bend. Um, this is gonna give it a lot of strength and I'm gonna be fully welding this. Um, and it definitely looks a lot beefier as well. It's definitely starting to look a lot more complete. I'm really happy with the way it's turning out. So I got the top brace all tacked into place. I got the bottom brace all tacked into place. And now there's only two braces left to tack in. Those are gonna be the braces from the side panel to the back panel. So I'm gonna work on that now. And once I get those two last braces tacked into place, all I gotta do is finish fully welding everything and this thing is done. So let me flip this thing around and we can get going on the side braces. Okay, so I got one by one by 3 16 square tubing. And this is what I'm gonna be using to brace up the side panel to the back panel here. So what I'm thinking is coming straight across, basically from the end of the side panel to the very back panel. Um, so it's looking like I'm gonna need a piece probably around 24 to 26 in length. I'll probably cut it at 26. So let me mark that and I'll put it in a chop saw. I'll cut one end at a 45 degree angle and uh, we'll see how it fits. Set this to 45 degree angle. So I just cut the other end. Try to bring it down a little bit. All right, so I think I'm gonna leave it right just below half here. Just below the halfway mark because most of the load, if you hit something um, with the side panel here, 
you're typically going to hit it down low. You're not going to hit it up high. So if anything, the lower end needs more support than the upper end does. So I think I'm just going to leave this a little bit below the halfway point. So the halfway point's about here. So I'm going to leave it a little, little shy of that. I'm going to make sure this is nice and level and I'll tack it in place. But before I do that, I'm going to use this piece here as a template so I can make sure that the other side is the exact same size. foot all right now we can tack the other side Okay, so that's what it looks like with the braces on there. So that's definitely gonna support these sides in case they get hit by something. It's definitely not gonna go anywhere now. So now I'm gonna fully weld these. And um, once they're fully welded, I just gotta finish up my other welds. I still have to weld it here on each side panel on the inside here. And then I have to weld the front side of the cutting edge or the bottom of the uh, cutting edge mount. And then I have to weld the inside of the top of the overhang here. Uh, but aside from that, once I get that stuff welded, um, I just got to finish fully welding the back two braces and it'll be done. So I'm going to do all that now and then I'll get back with you guys as soon as it's done. All right guys, so I ended up getting most of the backside here welded. Um, as you guys can see, I've got this support here welded on the backside. I've also got it welded on the front side here. I will flip it around so you guys can kind of see the entire picture here. I got all the edges welded um, on either side here. And I also got the top side of the bottom brace welded. You guys can see here, turned out really nice. Um, and then I ran out of mid gas, just coming down here, you could see where it started to pop and sputter. Uh, I ran out of mid gas and I was not able to get the bottom side here uh, fully welded yet. So I will have to do that. Um, and also let me flip this around and I'll show you what else needs to be done still. So on the other side here, you can see I got my braces all put in. Um, what I need to finish welding here is the top of the edge here for the uh, piece of flat stock I have here at a 45 as well as the cutting edge mount. So that needs to be welded as well. And both inner um, side panels need to be welded on either side. So I gotta pick up some gas tomorrow, but I am gonna leave this video here uh, because it's really not gonna change the look of the whole thing. You guys know what it looks like now and how it turned out. So I'm gonna finish welding it and then I'm gonna get this thing painted. So you guys will see this in my next video all finished up. Um, you guys see me get the skids on there. We got them all built. Um, so it's pretty much done. I just got to finish up a few other things. I'll pick up the gas tomorrow, finish the welding, and uh, we'll get it painted. And uh, next time you guys see this, hopefully it'll be in my next video. And uh, you guys will be able to see it completely done. And hopefully we'll get some snow here pretty shortly and we can use it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of building a push box, uh, part one and part two. So this should be the last main video of this push box. And I will feature it in my next video, just kind of going over it. Um, the final, you know, product and whatnot, but I won't make another video probably on this specifically. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.